at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time and translated here at C-SPAN in Washington, D.C. It's about 40 minutes. You are watching the evening news of the Radio Television Serbia. President of the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, Slobodan Milosevic, met today with Patrick of Moscow and all of Russia, Alexis II, and Serbian Patrick Pavle, who were accompanied by dignitaries from Russian and Serbian Orthodox Church. At 2 p.m., His Holiness Patrick of Moscow and all of Russia, Alexis II, met with the President of Republic, Slobodan Milosevic, and his family. Together with Patriarch, Serbian Patriarch Pavle was present, as well as were high dignitaries from Russian and Serbian Orthodox churches, Kirill Bishop of Smolex in Kaliningrad and Bishop of Bačka i Rine. Patriarch Alexei and Patriarch Pavle were met by President Milosevic, his wife Dr. Mira Markovic, and son Marko. In a very cordial discussion that was held based on the deep understanding and friendship between the peoples of Russia and Yugoslavia, Patrick Alexei expressed strong support and solidarity that Russian people feel for the people of Yugoslavia who are decisively defending themselves from the NATO aggression. In thanking for this support, President Milosevic stated that our people are defending their freedom and their country and that the visit of Russian Patriarch is an evidence of great support to our people in their just cause. Russian and Serbian Orthodox churches unconditionally support the alliance between Russia, Belarus, and Yugoslavia and view it as a great historic event in the interests of the peoples of all three countries, in the interests of peace, security, and development. After the meeting, Patrick Pavle and Alexei II, together with the Bishop of Smolensk, Smolensk and Kaliningrad Kirill and Bishop of Bajka Irine, as well as the other dignitaries accompanying Russian Patriarch proceeded to lunch hosted by President Milosevic in honor of Patriarch Alexei. Patriarch Alexei and President Milosevic both raised toasts. At the end of the discussion, President of Yugoslavia Slobodan Milosevic and Russian Patriarch Alexei II gave a statement to the journalists. I am very pleased that I have this opportunity to greet His Holiness Patrick Alexei II, whose visit is appreciated by all of our people as an expression of great solidarity of Russian people, Russian Church, and of Alexei II personally in these difficult days of war when our country is exposed to a criminal aggression of NATO alliance and when our people are struggling for the freedom and independence of their country. We have known Patrick Alexei for a long time now. We know that he is a great patriot, and we also know that he is a great proponent of peace. His visit today is a further testament to that. His persistence in fighting for peace will undoubtedly be successful, and we believe that he and his commitment to peace will contribute to the establishment of peace in this region. We also believe that Russia will contribute to the peace solution in this region and to finding an end to this aggression that has no grounds on moral, legal, or any other human principle. We discussed many issues in our previous meetings and today here, and I can assure you that we understand each other on all of these topics. We have also discussed the alliance between Russia, Belarus, and Yugoslavia. I'm very pleased that 
I was able to hear once again from Patrick Alexei what I had already known, which is that he personally, Russian church and Russian people, from the bottom of their hearts support an alliance between Yugoslavia, Russia and Belarus. We believe that this alliance will be of great importance to all three countries, to all the people living in these countries, also to peace, to stability, progress, development. And in every respect, this alliance shall be of great importance to all of us. I wish to thank His Holiness Patrick Alexei for his decision to visit us in these difficult times. And once again, I want to wish him welcome to Belgrade and to Yugoslavia. I also wish to thank His Holiness Serbian Patrick Pavle for his contribution and everything that he has done so far in order to achieve peace in our country. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, thank you for your warm words, for the cordiality with which you have greeted us and with which Serbian Orthodox Church and people of Yugoslavia have welcomed us. We had an opportunity today to see a large number of people, citizens of Belgrade, who gathered for a service that was held by me and Patrick Pavle, first in the Church of St. Sava, and afterwards we completed the liturgy under the open skies. Today is a special day because we held a memorial service for all those that were killed. We prayed for all that suffered in this war that was commenced by NATO forces in which peaceful citizens of Yugoslavia are being killed. Recently, on April 6th, in the monastery of St. Danilo in Moscow, we blessed a convoy of humanitarian aid consisting of about 80 trucks. And I have to say that the enthusiasm that united Russian government, administration, Russian church, and also ordinary citizens who are certainly faced with great difficulties today, but all wish to help people of Yugoslavia in their suffering. And as we were sending off the convoy, we said that this convoy was intended to all those who lost their roofs, who became refugees, be they in Montenegro or in Macedonia, regardless of their ethnic or religious background. Those who suffer must be helped. And with those sentiments in mind, we sent off this humanitarian convoy, which was blessed in the monastery of St. Danilo. I blessed with the holy water the trucks that headed towards Yugoslavia. Today, we are overjoyed at this opportunity to be here in this blessed land, blessed and long-suffering land. We wish to joyfully remember today those who gave what was dearest to them their life as a result of aggression, bombing and shelling. The Church always favors reconciliation. Reconciliation is an integral part of service to God. 
We shall be grateful to God if our appeals addressed to the leadership of NATO and to the leaders of Federal Republic of Yugoslavia calling for a peaceful resolution to this problem are heard and if the blessed peace comes to reign in this long-suffering land. Because as a result of bombing and shelling, peaceful citizens are being killed, not only military facilities. People are left without their jobs. They are losing their jobs in companies where no military activity transpired. The attack is car are carried against power plants, bridges that connect people and help them communicate. We pray to God and hope that the Lord will bless this land with peace and conquered, and that finally those who believe that the bombing only will be able to achieve their objectives and who carried out against people of Yugoslavia and their government an attack who launched an avalanche of fire against them. We wish from the bottom of our heart the peace upon this land. We remember that during our visit five years ago, we also came forward with a peaceful initiative. We, together with Patrick Pavle, visited Sarajevo, using a new means of transportation, an armored personnel carrier, in order to reach airport in Sarajevo and sign Sarajevo declaration there, which called for a peaceful resolution of the problem that was of burning importance at the time. Today, we also urge that the peaceful solution be found at the negotiating table instead of on the battle. We also hope that the refugees will be able to come back to their homes, that people will refrain from new military conflicts. Because in Kosovo, people of many ethnic background lived for centuries and they lived in accord. However, inflamed by the intervention of foreign powers, the situation became tense and brothers turned against each other. This is why people who lived in Yugoslavia and who were experienced in peaceful coexistence, people of different nationalities and different religious backgrounds. These people need to resolve these issues without foreign intervention. They have to stop this bloodshed that causes death and suffering. People are forced to leave the houses where they lived for centuries because they are afraid of military activity in Kosovo. They are also afraid of the attacks by the so-called Kosovo Liberation Army, which is being heavily armed now. As a result of that, Kosovo, this blessed soil that has so many Orthodox sacred sites and which has been sending prayer to the Lord for the last six centuries, can turn into a desert.
может превратиться в пустыню. Не дай Боже. God forbid that it should happen. We have to do everything possible to stop the escalation of the armed conflict and prevent it from spilling over. We hope that people of Yugoslavia will be firm and courageous and we wish them a peaceful resolution of the problems they are facing today and not a military resolution. We are cordially grateful for your hospitality. We are grateful to the people of Yugoslavia for the warmth that they have extended to us, for the warm sentiments that they have shown to us because they have greeted us as the representatives of the friendly Russian people. We represent the peoples of Russia. Russia is also a multinational country. And now the people of Russia in these difficult days and through these serious challenges share the pain and suffering of the Yugoslav people. We are grateful to the God for giving us an opportunity to visit Belgrade in these difficult days. For giving us an opportunity to be with our Serbian brethren and to demonstrate that we stand by you in these difficult times. To show that our brothers, peoples of Yugoslavia are not alone in their struggle. We pray for them and give them moral support in these difficult times. Thank you. Patriarch Alexei and Pavle spent with President Milosevic and his family a full four hours. They left the residence of the President at 6 p.m. His Holiness, Patriarch of Moscow and all of Russia, Alexei II, who as a proponent of peace came to our country, served together with Patriarch Pavle a liturgy in front of the Church of St. Sava in Belgrade. Prime Minister Mamir Bulatovic and Chairman of the Parliament of Serbia Dragan Tomic were present at the liturgy. His Holiness, Patrick of Moscow and all of Russia, Alexei II and Serbian Patrick Pavle, served in the Church of St. Sava in Vracar, Lethargy of St. John. This joint service held by two Patricks in these challenging times is an expression of love and good faith, desire to see the reason triumph and to see an end to bombing. More than tens of thousands of people gathered around St. Sava Church in in order to participate in this joint prayer of Serbian and Russian patriarchs. Prime Minister Mamir Bulatovic, Chairman of Serbian Parliament Dragan Tomic and other dignitaries as well as diplomats were present at this prayer. Wishing welcome to Russian patriarch, Pacek Pavle said, we pray for the Lord to send peace to everyone in our country who are suffering in this misfortune that unfairly befell on us in this NATO attack and bombing. I wish you welcome. At the end of the prayer, Russian Patrick Alexei II addressed the people with these words. We are witnessing an appalling illegal violence inflicted by several powerful and mighty countries who arrogantly consider themselves to be a global standard for measuring good and evil and overlook the will of the people who wish to live differently. Bombs and missiles are not showered on this country because they are protecting anyone. 
NATO military activity has another objective, which is to destroy the world post-war order, which was paid by blood of so many, and impose upon people a new order based on dictatorship of brutal force. But injustice and hypocrisy shall never win, because, as the ancient saying goes, that God can be found not in the force, but in truth and justice. Perhaps the enemy is mightier than you are, but Lord's assistance and teachings of history are on your side. Let us just recall the moral of the most recent history lesson, the Second World War. His Holiness, Patriarch of Moscow and all of Russia, Alexei II, appealed to the leadership of NATO to stop all military activity and start peace process. Russian Orthodox Church and all of people of goodwill are ready to assist in that. Russian Orthodox Church is praying for everyone who suffers in our country. Russian Patriarch gave to Serbian Orthodox Church an icon of Saint Seraphim. Patriarch of Moscow and all of Russia, Alexei II, met today with the leader of Kosovo Albanians, Dr. Ibrahim Rukova. Patriarch and Dr. Rugava discussed the peaceful resolution of the problem in Kosovo and Metohia. More than 20,000 of Kosovo Albanians from Podovo region went back to their homes, which they previously left due to NATO bombing. Albanians from Shaikovac and the surrounding villages came back in a convoy back to their houses. The reporter from Serbian television reports from this spot. Serbian authorities are doing everything they can in order to encourage the return of Albanian refugees to their homes in talks with the members of Kosovo Temporary Executive Council, Baiko Yashari and Selin Gojufi, Albanian refugees from Shaikovac and other surrounding villages in Podovo state that the only reason they left Kosovo and their houses were the bombings of NATO forces and not something else, as is being portrayed by NATO alliance. I want a peaceful solution to this. I don't want any bombing. Not bombing. I don't support that, and neither do my relatives. They don't want any bombing. Who can benefit from this bombing? Who? Nobody. We wish to go back to our homes, and we want this bombing to stop. We want to live decently as we lived before. What do you want to say to these aggressors that keep dropping bombs to stop dropping bombs? The villagers were afraid of NATO bombing. They left their homes and headed to the road, not really knowing where it leads. Serbia is doing everything it can to enable all those refugees who left to go back to their homes because they have no other country other than Serbia and Yugoslavia. And all authorities in the federal government and in Kosovo government are doing everything they can to help refugees, to help them go back home. The aggressor once again wanted to take advantage of the misfortune of these people, which was also caused by NATO, and use them as a pretext for continued bombing of Yugoslavia. Albanians in this part of Kosovo state that they wish to live in Serbia, in which they enjoy equal rights with the members of other ethnic communities, members of Kosovo Temple Executive Council distributed humanitarian aid to all the families that came back to their homes. Day after day, despite criminal incessant NATO bombing in Kosovo, more and more Albanians decide to respond to the call of Serbia and Yugos Serbian and Yugoslav authorities and go back to their homes that they left fearing NATO's deadly bomb lot. More Several hundred Albanians who came back from the border to their homes were met by a reporter in the villages of Dobrusha and Prekale. The Temporary Council of Kosovo helped these people, providing food, drinks and medical services to them. Here, milk and cream cheese. 
The recent brutal bombing of an identical convoy of Albanians near Jakovic and the killing of some 70 of their fellow Albanians who were also going back to their homes brought these people to their senses because they realized that they were simply being manipulated by the NATO alliance. I want the whole world to stand by us, to respect us and to stop bombing us, because this is a terrible loss, both for our Yugoslavia and for Albanians and for Serbs. And who are you, what is your ethnic background? I am an Albanian. NATO is bombing, so we had to leave our homes. We had to run away. I want the peace and I want NATO to stop bombing. I want people to see that we are being provided food and medical services and the doctors are there. People want to go back home. NATO bombs fall at night. They don't know where we are, where the army is, where the police is. Uh, you know what happened near Jakovic. Yes, you heard what happened to that convoy. Yes, I heard when I was at home. I heard what happened by Jakovic. And now at night, all of us are afraid. Yes, uh, we were injured and the doctors here treated me and children and all of the people here. And now they brought us food and uh, we uh, want to go home to our homes where we lived before. Better, the refugees say that bitter experience taught them never to trust again the false promises given by nature aggressors who played a brutal game with their lives. Last night and this morning, NATO attacked solely residential neighborhoods, industrial facilities in most major cities of Serbia. In yesterday's attack on Nish, one civilian was killed and nine injured. Ten houses in Shlaka neighborhood are completely ruined, while 15 are damaged. Fascists bombed the storage facility of the Coppone company where the fire erupted. They also shelled the facilities of the tobacco factory in Nish. One missile ended in the backyard of a house in Glogovica village. Today, aggressor targeted Pristina Pei Detonations were heard near Pech, and at 11 p.m., four missiles landed near Belachevac, eight missiles landed near Pristina. Two bombs were launched at Poduevo, and one cruise missile landed near Gnilane. Last night, four destructive missiles were launched by NATO Alliance in the vicinity of the Special Rehabilitation Hospital hospital in Novi Pazar. From 3.40 until 4.50, more than 15 missiles were launched at Kurshumlia on civilian facilities. The missiles hit the industrial complex Metalets in the vicinity of a hospital. Industrial complex Krushik in Valle was attacked by NATO enemies. Seven missiles hit an already destroyed factory. Also damaged were the elementary school, daycare, as well as Valle Hospital, where there are several hundred patients. NATO aggressor continues to bomb civilian facilities. Yesterday, they targeted the village of Donja Brnica near Pristina, inhabited mostly by Serbian population. A missile landed in the orchard of the Miladin of each family. Although it exploded partially, a great damage was inflicted on the houses in the village. You can see what these aggressors are doing. This is a Serbian village. There are no military facilities here. They are only shelling civilian facilities. We are living here. There are 200 Serbian families here, about 2,000 inhabitants, and their purpose is to destroy the village and Serbian population. They want to make us leave this area, but they won't succeed. We shall defend our homeland as long as there are any Serbs left. Kosovo is Serbian and will remain Serbian. My grandfather, great-grandfather lived 100 years each. They never left this soil and neither shall we. We shall defend our country until the last moment and my grandson,
will do the same thing. After recent bombing of Pristina downtown in which civilians were killed, NATO aggressors once again targeted this part of the city, which is purely residential. Under the rubble, we found remnants of the air-to-land missile launched on March 18th around 10 p.m. The missile is interesting because it bears the signature of the enemy pilot who bombed civilian facilities. These civilian facilities were targeted once again by NATO airplanes. There is no doubt that this pilot purposely committed a grave crime against humanity by bombing civilian targets. So now it's up to the UN Security Council and Hague Tribunal to punish this criminal act. If they fail to do so, then murdering of civilian population anywhere in the world shall be legalized. For weeks now, NATO showers deadly load on our country. It is launched from the planes, plane carriers and submarines. NATO uses the bombs that are banned, which are called cluster bombs. One of them landed near Podgorica, near the airport Golubovci. In the neighborhood where there are civilian facilities, so there are no military facilities in that area, this cluster bomb has, is very destructive. These small cluster bombs that are inside of this large bombs look like this. This is a bomb called MK180 series, meaning that it is still in a research stage. What is significant here is that they are using the latest equipment and means. This is a bomb called Seabell 99B slash B. This is something that we still do not have, we are not familiar with. We're not familiar with this bomb. We deal with this as best we can. The, this bomb was designed to be used against personnel and armored and non-armored tactical and strategic targets. This bomb is very dangerous for civilians because the houses and the roofs are really not an obstacle for this bomb. And this is exactly why this bomb is dangerous to civilians. People don't know what this is, so they try to remove it by their hands, and this bomb is not to be touched because it has an electric ignition which reacts to static electricity, and every person has uh, static electricity in their body, so uh, this actually activates the bomb. Based on the information service of Kragujevac Corps, Yugoslav Air Force shot down two enemy planes over Kragujevac last night. The armored and mechanized units of Yugoslav Army are one of the strongholds of our defense. NATO was not able to cause significant losses to them. General, as an experienced tank expert, what can you say about your units that have very uh, modern tanks, M84s? Our school of armored uh, fighting is one of the most famous in the world. We have very well equipped units and you are right when you say that they are a basis of our defense and for deterring NATO from this aggression on our country. Our officers are well educated, they are very skilled and they have taken all measures in order to prevent losses by their huge aviation that now for over 20 days has been attacking our region. I have to tell you, in praising our people and our army, that we basically have not had any losses in our combat equipment. How would the tank M84 face off in a conflict with a Western tank? Uh, this tank M84 is one of uh, the better tanks in the world. It has been produced over 10 years ago, but it can still face up the challenge of more modern tanks. And um, in this situation where we know the terrain, we know the people, we know that our people are patriots and they 
are defending their country. We are not attacking Germany. We are not attacking United States. We are defending the cradle of Serbian nation, of all Serbs, regardless of where they live in the world. So these boys of ours will definitely inflict great damage to enemy tanks, to personnel, which is another guarantee of the defense and resilience of our people if there should be NATO aggression with ground troops. The government of Serbia, in a session chaired by Mirko Marjanovic, today analyzed the payments that are being made in order to satisfy the government obligation with respect to their citizens. It was concluded that the financial obligations of the governments are successfully met in order to ensure that for April, May and June of 1999, these financial obligations will be met as well. The government proposed a new regulation on the payment of balance, setting a list of priorities for these financial obligations. Despite of everything they are trying, the aggressors cannot destroy the truth and the creation of new life. In Nish, during bombing, 200th baby was born from the beginning of this aggression. It was a healthy boy. Attacking the truth, NATO once again threatened radio television of Serbia. This is what Federal Minister Goran Matic said yesterday at the press conference. Our gathering here today was caused by the latest statements claiming that radio, television and journalists are military targets and as such should be destroyed because they are just as da dangerous as the military force. Your profession, my profession is today faced with this new pressure that is unprecedented in the history, not only the history of journalism, but also in the history of wars so far. They are threatening the radio television of Serbia today because they think that radio television of Serbia has indoctrinated foreign journalists. You know that this is not true. You know very well that the report on a false mass grave in the village of Ivica is not true. And what Pentagon reports is not true. Tomorrow we shall enable you to go to this village and to see this false mass grave for yourself. Today our colleagues in the building of Radio Television Serbia are exposed to an immediate threat of bombing. I would like to call upon all of the foreign journalists, especially those who won't lose their jobs because of that, to walk with me to the building of Radio Television Serbia and to see this building which makes the earth shake and causes shivers to NATO, Pentagon and all this might that possesses all those planes and all those countries are behind it. Let us take a walk to the building of Radio Television Serbia and let us see what has caused fear to the powerful NATO and powerful Pentagon today. 
Federal Minister Goran Matic, after the press conference, called all the foreign reporters to walk with him to Radio Television Serbia's building in Takovska Street and show their support to the staff of TV. More than 100 foreign reporters were met by the chief editor of the news section of Radio Television Serbia, Komrakov. Foreign journalists wanted to know how Radio Television Serbia functioned, and they were told that despite NATO threats, Radio Television Serbia broadcasts its programming regularly and that all of its staff members are doing their jobs. This meeting was an opportunity for foreign journalists to send back home a report on the activities that take place in Radio Television Serbia, which is one of the largest establishments of its kind in the Balkans. This morning on Washington Journal, New Jersey Congressman Donald Payne. He was part of a delegation that recently went to Macedonia to observe a refugee camp there. He'll talk about his trip and show us more of a video that he shot of the camp and interviews that he did with some of the refugees. Washington Journal is live at 7 a.m. Eastern here on C-SPAN. This morning at 9 Eastern, live coverage of the daily NATO briefing on the military action in Yugoslavia. Live coverage on our companion network, C-SPAN 2.